Hello and welcome to another Magic the Gathering video. So today, finally, we're going to be looking at the Commander product. I've had a bit of a delay on this. Um, I wanted to get all five, um, and thanks very much for, for Giant Robot Comics um, in Dartmouth, Nova Scotia, for getting hold of these for me. Um, we did have a lot of trouble. They had a number of boxes where they didn't have all the colours in them. Um, and uh, so finally I managed to get hold of these. Um, you shouldn't if, you, if you're, it depends what you're after when you're buying these. Um, these products do seem readily available um, individually, although certain of the decks have been snapped up faster than others, but they are seem to be available across the board both in, you know, game stores, comic shops and Walmart and Target and very early on. There's no been no delayed release where you know, the comic shops got them first and then there was a you know, a couple of weeks later, uh, the big stores got them. They seem to all get them at the same time. Um, in my area, both uh, Walmart and um, Targets do still have ones, although um, things like the certain decks, uh, they, they don't seem to have like notice they've still got. I think they had, one of them had uh, sort of some reds and the green or red and the white. Um, so it's where you go, you might find that, that people have just basically snapped up the most popular ones. Um, it's nice to see, um, you know, hopefully we're going to see a regular release of, of Commander decks now or substantial Commander product every November. We've had a skip really. I mean, I know there was the Commander's Arsenal, but that was, you know, very low quantities and the price on that just went through the roof. Um, it's nice to see decks being produced. So, you know, if you if you manage to get hold of the original Commander decks, then it's, that's great. And again, these are three colour decks. Um, on this video, I'll just do a little bit of explanation about a couple of things, um, and I'll obviously skip over that on the on the when I come to do the later videos. So probably it's going to take me a week, couple of weeks to do all the videos probably, um, and I'll just release them as I as I do them. Um, so again, three three colours. Uh, this is called the evasive manoeuvres. I'm going to go through these in Wooburg order. So you know, white, blue. Uh, black, red, green. If you look at the, the back of a, a magic card, you can see uh, the, the color pie. Um, in the boxes, when you look at them, they have this sort of color down the side. So this is the white one. Um, the black one looks actually more purple. And it'd be interesting to see how these colors tie in with the, um, the colors here. And I'll, I'll explain a little bit about this. So in the original Commander product, um, the colors were in what was called a wedge formation. So the, the, there were three colour decks, uh, there were five three colour decks, and they, they basically, if we use one, one as an example, so one of the decks had white, blue, and red in it. And you can see white and blue is what's called allied colours, they're, they're side by side. And the red, which is across from it, was enemy colour of both. And that's how they constructed the colour combination on all five of those decks. Two, two colours, two um, allied colours, and one en corresponding enemy colour. On this one, they've adopted the shard system. And with shards, that's the, the colours that are side by side. Now, the term shards obviously ties in with shards of Alara. And um, as with a lot of colour combinations in Magic, um, they then get names. So in, in Alara block, there was five shards, Bant, Esper, Grixis, Jund, Naya, and they each were three colours. Um, you, you've seen this before as well in things like Ravnica block where you know the two colour combinations all the ten two colour combinations had a particular guild and therefore when you get two colour combinations people tend to call them by their guilds so the same with three colours if they're in the combination same as the uh, shards then they get called that colour combination that, that particular shards name um, so you can see here green white blue green white blue um, what was interesting in shards, one of these, the middle colour if you like, was referred to as the primary colour. So in this example we have Bant colour combination. And in Bant the primary colour was white, the middle one, and the two secondary colours were green and blue. Now it's going to be interesting if this is reflected in the deck, you know, is there a higher proportion of white in here? I'm not going to know until I open it. But anyway, these are. this is a shard and it's a green, white, blue, and in this case the colour does correspond to the primary colour if we're, we're you know, being strict about um, 
the, the Alara colour combinations. But we'll see with the other decks how that actually uh, reflects when we come to unbox them. So in here, just looking at the outside, you can see we've got, again, oversized cards. There's three of these. They're all foil, and well, we'll find out in a moment. Um, and there's a 100-card deck. So the idea with these foil cards is they sort of can be used as a replacement for your commander. Um, but in the deck itself, there are the, the regular size commander decks for, for the you know, so, so that if you need them, you can use them. If you don't want to play with these, you don't have to. So let's open this up and see what we've got. I believe this has got these come with them um, oversized boxes as well. So that, that whereas last time the boxes were fairly small, which meant you couldn't fit the oversized cards in them. This time they have this thing. Been this too bad. There we go. So let's just zoom in on this. So a nice foil here. Uh, so we've got uh, Derevi Imperial Tactician. Legendary creature bird wizard. I'll go through this properly when I come to the deck. Um, so the idea with this is you know you have the sort of I suppose if you want to call it recommended commander for the deck but and there's also other legendary creatures in the deck and what they do is they also give you additional large cards for the two others so that if you wanted to use them as a commander you could but that's not nothing to stop you you know, completely changing out the deck keeping the core engine of the deck if it would be appropriate to a, to another commander Gonna, I was curious about this as to whether you could fit. Yeah, I'm thinking you know, with this out and you'd sleeved up cards, would they would they fit? There may be. I imagine I don't have any with me at the moment. If you had some of those really tight fitting cards, that might might work as an idea. But anyway, just for storage purposes, so pre-sleeved. Yeah, that's going to work, and there is a bit of well, there's a bit of a gap in there, so that might well not very cheap. Yep, in theory, although with sleeves on them again, it might get large. But anyway, that's something to just to know. I mean, it's not essential, but it's it's good to know if those fit in. Let's just have a look and see what we have here. I think yeah, we've got our standard uh, how to play. So this is the, the deck, the deck description, um, and I'm just wondering. Yeah. So it doesn't give you a list, you know, like with some magic product, you get a sort of nice list of where the original stuff comes from. Because that's quite nice if you're looking for sort of arcs of uh, cards, cycles of cards. So we've got 38 lands in here. We'll have a look at these: six forests, seven plains. Uh, seven islands. So in that combination, um, you know, planes doesn't really stick out. So I don't think there's any maybe much significance there in terms of the primary colour. Um, and where are we? I'm just trying to see here. So there's a little bit about about a bit of a blurb about a Derevi Imperial Tactician. And then down here. Is, is the how to play command. And I'm not going to go through in this video on, on basically how to play command or building a commander deck. This is really just a, a box opening. Oh, here we go. That's the deck we're looking for. There we go. Playing the deck. Let me quickly look, scan through this. Winning the battle and then redrawing before the tide can turn against you. So this is interesting. So with most commanders, uh, they cost more and more each time they return to the battlefield from the command zone. But not with Devere. She's actually got a, 
a special ability on here, which is obviously um, very much commander focused. And you're, you're going to you tend to see this with the commander product. Is it does enable them to to specifically reference the command zone on it. So that that's obviously going to be a significant advantage. Uh, while der Derivi, der Derivi is on the battlefield. Attack whenever you see an opportunity for each creature that can evade being blocked. You can untap one of your permanents or tap one of the opponent's permanents. Untap your lands to cast a huge spell. Untap a creature and artifact repeatedly to get more than your fair share of activation from it. Untap your creatures so that you can use them as blockers later or play politics by tapping or untapping an opponent's creatures as the strategy needs of the moment dictate. While all of this is going on, your opponent's life totals will steadily drop due to the unceasing un assault. So the thing is, you know, if you were something else, it, it's obviously tapping matters here. Um, tapping or untapping matters. So it, it wouldn't surprise me, and it will also would be a good move if you're trying to modify this deck at some point in the future, to definitely look, go down that avenue of tapping matters, or what, what things synergize well with tapping or untapping of certain uh, permanents. Because it does say target permanent, which is useful. So let's actually go through this deck. Um, this is going to be a longish video with 100 cards and also no preamble, so um, a, a nice beverage would probably be a good idea. So here we have uh, Derevi Imperial Tactician, green, white, blue, two, three, flying. Whenever the EV Imperial Tactician enters the battlefield or a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, you may tap or untap target permanent. And as I said, there's a special um, command zone ability of white, green, sorry, color, one colorless white. Um, I'll start again. One colorless green, white, blue. Put Derivi onto the battlefield from the command zone, and it's a 2-3. Then um, we've got um, Kazandu Tusk Caller. This, is, uh, this has got level up on it. Had a Spy Patrol, so we've got some level up stuff in here. So with level up, if you've not seen this before, this was a feature of the Zendikar block. I can't remember off the top of my head specifically which of the, the sets from that block. Um, and um, on it what you had is these sort of level up abilities where it would alter the power and toughness um, and that would be affected by you basically paying extra to do that and as the, their leveling increased the amount of level counters and you use like a counter system on the, on this to indicate their level that would dictate their ability and also their power and toughness uh, Mr Meadow Witch Looks like something from um, one of those sort of uh, Norwin Shadow Moor sort of blocks. So Lesnia Guild Mage, Pilgrim's Eye, Farhaven Elf. So something that will hunt down uh, like a basic land card. Phantom Nantuko, Mirror Entity. Stone Cloaker, Deceiver Exarch, Fiend Hunter. If I'd done my homework on this, I'd be specifically be able to tell you which things are completely new in this deck. Never mind. Uh, Flicker Wisp, Thornwind Fairies, Wind Cottle, Angel of Finality, Wonder. Dungeon Geists, Luzon, Luzon, Scholar General, so another legendary creature in here. It's got Horsemanship, so that's a pretty old ability. Uh, this creature can't be blocked except by creatures with Horsemanship. And because it, what you know, it's a very early ability, um, it, it's you know can be used uh, as a form of evasion uh, because you know the unlikely to be um, or less likely should I say that people will be playing um, horsemanship cards although I, I understand that it's starting to increase in command because of the fact that it gives you a sort of effective like uh, evasion whenever 
than Scholar General deal damage to an opponent, you may draw a card. That's a 1 3. Airy Mystics, Diviner Spirit, Karmic Guide. So I'll just also flag up the rares in here as well. A 3 and 2 white for a 2 2 flying protection from black. It's got an echo on it. 3 and 2 white at the beginning of your upkeep. If this came under your control since the beginning of your last upkeep, sacrifice it unless you pay its echo cost when Karmic Guide enters the battlefield return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Acidic Slime, it's got Death Touch in it and good for blowing up um, artifacts, enchantments or land. 2-2 two, two for 3 and 2 green. Azami Lady of Scrolls, another legendary creature. Human Wizard, 0-2 for a cost of 2 colourless and 3 blue. Tap and untap Wizard you control, draw a card. Rune of the Hidden Realms, so a mythic, uh, two green white, blue, uh, green, white, blue, four, four, vigilance and trample, and for a cost of two colourless, you get to exile another target creature. Return that creature to the battlefield under its owner's control at the beginning of the next end step. Rubina Soul Slinger, legendary creature fairy, two colourless, green, white, blue, two, three. You may choose not to untap Rubina Soul Slinger singer during your untap step tap gain control of a target creature for as long as you control Rabina and Ramina remains tapped Merkfield Merkfiend Leech another another rare 4-4 four, four, for a cost of 2 and 3 hybrid green blues uh, another green creature you control get plus 1 plus 1 and other blue creatures you control get plus 1 plus 1 Untap all green and blue creatures you control during each other player's untap step. Um, these, like I said, these we've seen cards from the these sort of that sort of law win um, eventide period, and there was a lot of really useful. Um, you know, if you've got a green creature, get this. If you've got a blue creature, get this. And of course, if you're playing hybrid green blue, then you get both. So that's quite a good um, a good set to go through and have a look for stuff like that. Uh, Gin of Infinite Deceits, 2-7 for cost of 4 colourless, 2 blue. It's got flying and you can tap it, exchange control of 2 target non-legendary creatures. You can, can't can activate this ability during combat. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, Bane of Progress, another rare, 4 and 2 green, 2-2. Two, two. When Bane of Progress enters the battlefield, destroy all artefacts and enchantments. Put a plus 1, plus 1 count on Bane of Progress for each permanent destroyed this way. Skyward Eye Prophets. We've got Soul Ring in here, like we did with the other um, Commander decks. Selesnia Signet. So good uh, fixing there for, for one colourless. Um, green, uh, add green and white to your mana pool. So you've got sort of filter and two colour fixing going on there together. Simmer Signet, same for green blue. Uh, Surveyor's Scope. Exile Surveyor's Scope, search your library for up to X basic land cards where X is the number of players who's con who control at least two more lands than you. Put those cards onto the battlefield, then shuffle your library. Swiftfoot Boots, so we're going through all our artifacts here. Azorus Key Rune, um, we can tap this and add white or blue to your mana pool, three colourless. And also, if, if you're not interested in using its um, mana generating abilities, you can turn it into a 2-2 white and blue bird artifact creature with flying until end of turn for a cost of white and blue. Basalt Monolith. Basalt Monolith doesn't untap during your untap step. Tap add three colourless to your mana pool and three untap Basalt Monolith. Dark Steel Ingot. So we've got an indestructible artifact here that will tap for one mana of any colour. The Onin Blade Strap, another artifact. Thousand Year Elixir, so it's a rare. Let's have a look at this. Three colourless um, artifact. You may activate abilities of creatures you control as though those creatures had haste. One colourless tap, you can untap a target creature. Thunderstaff, Sword of the Parons, another rare, uh, four colourless. Artifact equipment, as long as equipped creature is tapped, a tap, 
tapped creature you control get plus two plus zero. As long as equipped creature is untapped, untapped creatures you control get plus zero plus two. And for three, you may tap or untap equipped creatures and equip for three. And its cost can cost is four. Conjurer's Closet, five colorless. At the beginning of your end step, you may exile target creature you control, then return that card to the battlefield under your control. So that's good for uh, re-triggering into the battlefield abilities. And also getting, uh, that allow you to, to sort of bounce creatures out of danger. Um, actually, no, it, it has to happen at the end step, so you couldn't do that. But yeah, a good way of re-triggering into the battlefield stuff. Uh, Dark Steel Mutation, Enchant Creature. Enchanted Creature is a 0 1 insect artifact creature with indestructible and loses all other abilities. Flicker Form, 1 and a white enchant creature, exiled enchanted creature, and all auras attached to it. At the beginning of your of the next end step, return that creature to the battlefield under its owner's control. If you do return that, the owners, sorry, the other cards exiled this way to the battlefield under their owner's control attached to that creature, and that's two and two white to activate that. Curse of the Forsaken. Got quite a few rares in this deck. Curse of Inertia, so there's some curses in here. Curses of Predation. Presence of Gond. Control Magic. So with control magic, two and two blue, you get to enchant a creature, and you control enchanted creature. A leaf, leaf drake roost. Use that to enchant a land. Arcane denial, counter spell. Selesnia charm. So, you know, again, charms are very useful. You get to do, you choose one out of list of things so in this case with the green white selesnia one you can choose either to target creature gets plus two plus two and, and gains trample till end of turn exile a target creature with power five or greater or put a two two white knight creature token with vigilance onto the battlefield crows and grip ether mage touch two white blue for an instant that reveals the top four cards of your library you may put a creature card from among them onto the battlefield it gains at the beginning of your end step return this this creature to its owner's hand then put the rest of the cards revealed this way on the bottom of your library in any order unexpected absent unexpectedly absent uh, x to white put target non-land permanent onto its owner's library just beneath the top x cards of that library blue sun zenith x and three blue target player draws x card shuffle blue sun zenith into its owner's library so we've got some card draw here uh, restore lets us put target land card from the graveyard into the battlefield under our, our control borrowing a hundred thousand arrows is in here wash out tempt with glory five and a white Another rare, sorcery, tempting offer, put a plus one plus one counter on each creature you control. Each opponent may put a plus one plus one counter on each creature he or she controls. For each opponent who does, put a plus one plus one counter on each creature you control. Qatar's Wrath, another rare, four and two white, sorcery destroy all creatures. They can't be regenerated, it's got threshold on it. So if seven or more cards are in your graveyard, instead destroy all creatures, then put two 1-1 one, one, white spirit creature tokens with flying onto the battlefield. Creatures destroyed this way can't be regenerated. Azorus Chancery, so enter the battlefield tap and generates um, white and blue when you tap it, but also when it enters the battlefield you have to return a land you control to its owner's hand. Uh, Azorus Gilgate. I'll tap for white and blue, enter the battlefield tapped. Not surprising, we have Bant Panorama. Um, so it allows us to search out uh, for a cost of one colourless uh, a, a, a forest, plains, or island card, and then put them onto the battlefield tapped. And also, it can generate colourless mana. Command towers in here, not surprisingly. Uh, add to your mana pool one mana of any colour in your commander's colour identity. 
evolving wild so easy way to search libraries for basic lands and put them into the battlefield tapped you have to sack it uh, fairy conclave opal palace So another card that allows you to add to your mana pool one mana of any colour in your commander's colour identity with various if you spend this mana to cast your commander, it enters the battlefield with a number of plus one plus one counters on it, equal to the number of times it's been cast from the command zone this game. Alternatively you can just tap this and add one to your mana pool. Rupture Spire. Um, <clears throat> So this costs one, uh, well, say it costs one, you enter the battlefield tapped, and when it enters the battlefield, um, you have to sacrifice it unless you pay one colourless, but it does tap for one mana of any colour. Salt Crust is steep, so that's uh, green and white themed non-basic land. Seaside Citadel, green, white, blue. Secluded Steep, that's white with cycling. Uh, Sajiri Refuge, it's white and blue, you get to gain uh, one life when it enters, but you yeah, enter the battlefield tapped. Selesnia so Gilgate, it's green white, enters the battlefield tapped. Selesnia so Sanctuary, enters the battlefield tapped, generates green and white, but again, you have to return a land you control to its owner's hand, so it bounces. Simic Gilgate, green blue, enters the battlefield tapped. Temple of the False God, you get to add two to your mana pool, two colourless that is. Activate this ability only if you control five or more lands. Another um, fetch land which you sack to fetch out yeah, any basic land, Terramorphic Expanse. Transguild Promenade generates uh, one mana of any colour, but again you have to, uh, when it comes into the battlefield, you have to pay one colourless or you have to sacrifice it. And then we have our actual basic lands here. So our forests, not too sure where they originate from. I'm sure there's some land aficionados out there that would be able to tell me. That looks like, um, that may, I don't know. Often these that appear to come from, you know, they core sets, but um, sometimes it looks like it comes from other other stuff. So there we have it. So that was the evasive maneuvers um, green, white, blue deck, um, with with also the oversized commanders for um, that will be uh, Derivi, Rubinia, and Rune. Okay, thanks for watching.